welcome to the PFM couch at Afrosai E. I am Edmund Shoko. Our biggest challenge in this new century is to take an idea that seems abstract, sustainable development, and turn it into a reality for all the world's people. These are the seminal words of one of Africa's well-known diplomats and former Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Kofi Annan. Whilst the question of sustainable development is not new to the aspirations of mankind, in 2015, the UN Agenda 2030 packaged these aspirations into 17 goals. 17 goals designed to move mankind into a new realm of existence, a new world order to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all. Fast forward to today, right now, at this moment, a veritable sword of Democles hangs over the fiscal journey of Africa. This is as the continent seeks to realize the aspirational double agenda of the UN 2030 and the AU 2063 goals. And as the continent contemplates these twin challenges, it has been whacked in the face by the imposing advent of COVID-19 pandemic, which doubtlessly calls for conscious, inspired leadership and good governance. There is no doubt that a well-managed public financial management system is by far one of the best ways of enhancing Africa's ability to meet the agendas 2030 and 2063. The proverbial question that haunts this thought, however, is just how ready are our PFM systems to rise to expectation? And maybe most importantly, as beacons of accountability and transparency, what is the role that supreme audit institutions can play in all of this? Now, to answer these tough questions on the PFM couch today, we have in discussion Ms. Mason Kau, the Chief Executive Officer of Afrosai E. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me. Amazing, Carl. Good day and welcome to the PFM on the couch at Avrosai E. Hello, Edmund. Look, it's been very difficult to catch up with you. Uh, quite surprising we're in the same office, but uh, really we, we, <laughs> we never bump into each other until we're doing really important stuff like the PFM on the couch today. So I'm very happy to have you and thank you so much for finding time uh, from your busy schedule. And um, yeah. We are here and it's good to be here. Um, unfortunately, with COVID, you, you would know how difficult it is to be in the office at the same time. Absolutely. We've been in and out of um, lockdowns mm -hmm. at different levels, mm -hmm. which makes it a, a big challenge um, regionally and also in our office as we respond to the safety measures of COVID. Well, look, it's, 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 it's quite, um, what can I say? It's, it's quite perfect that you introduced this issue of, uh, of the pandemic. I mean, from your own perspective, how well have the size in the region uh, fared in balancing the need to uphold their mandate and uh, at the same time preserve the lives of the auditors who do the work? Edmund, um, you, you probably would know that the welfare of staff in any organization is mm -hmm. quite key. Absolutely. In most institutions, we refer to our staff as assets in our organization. So we need to look after these assets mm -hmm. that help us to achieve the objectives that we set for ourselves. Mm. So it's been quite a challenge, I believe, um, globally in, through gov in governments, in mm. organizations, to make sure that staff um, is well taken care of um, so that, uh, they, that the work of the size can continue. Mm -hmm. um, in, in Afrosai E, we mm -hmm. have implemented measures uh -huh. um, to work from home, um, to design online training, mm -hmm. um, e-learning materials, so that we can um, continue with our mandate of capacity building in the region mm -hmm. and reach our size as they continue to do their work. And I believe that um, 
the sites have equally faced those challenges, um, making data available for the staff to be oh, yes. to be accessible wherever they are, mm -hmm. to do their work, um, and also to attend to attend the training interventions. I would imagine that it has been quite difficult for the size um, to be present at the. Um, venues or auditory venues to do the audits um, mm -hmm. physically, it has compromised the lives. We have lost um, a number of auditors in the, in the region. Mm -hmm. um, we have lost lives globally. Um, it's, 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 it's really sad that we have lost life, but those are the realities that we live in currently. Mm -hmm. um, and if I may add, perhaps that the challenge for the size specifically has been to balance mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the working from home, yes. being productive, mm -hmm. meeting their mandates, and meeting the demands of the stakeholders mm -hmm. as, as they navigate through um, the, 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 the pandemic and also making sure that they, their work results in benefits mm -hmm, to the mm -hmm. citizens. Wow. Look, Macy, uh, it, it's definitely a difficult time um, but in some, in some cases for me, you, you've really made it look um, a little bit easy, hey? Because look, uh, the other day I was just listening to you as you are now proclaiming uh, the, the, the new idea that you have on how AfroCIE can still remain effective. Taking note that um, online learnings, the question of how impactful and how effective they are is, is something that has been raised quite um, a number of times. You've come up with something called blended approach, a blended approach. You, you want to talk more a bit about that um, and how you, you've been finding it? Uh, well, myself, I've been enjoying it, but <laughs> look, you, you crafted it. Tell us about it. Well, Ed, um, you, you, you know that in AfroSci E, mm -hmm. we, we co-own um, ideas, mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. co-develop. Mm -hmm. So the idea of blended learning mm -hmm. came as a result of evaluating um, our interventions and the outcomes and impact of yes. our um, interventions. So mm -hmm. you, you, you'd recall that um, we, we started during the March hard lockdown and yes. we took a firm decision that um, we were going to make sure that we put our donor funds to good use, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, even mm -hmm. though we are under lockdown. Absolutely. And um, we committed to developing um, online interventions and e-learning interventions. Sure. And when we roll those out, we realized that um, participation was a challenge in yes. that true, um, true size did not necessarily have the intended or the necessary internet mm -hmm. required for the staff to participate. Mm -hmm. um, so the internet is unreliable. So people were in and out of the interventions. And also we couldn't monitor uh, participation of the, of the, of the, of the staff um, in, in, during those learning or, or capacity building interventions. And as a result, while participation we had high numbers of mm -hmm. people attending um, those interventions. The, the absorption mm -hmm. in terms of internalizing um, the learnings and um, whether those learnings would be implemented mm -hmm. was questionable from our side. True. So, um, and, and secondly, as we advance through this pandemic and the restrictions, restrictions are adjusted, mm -hmm. um, and also we evaluate and see that some of the interventions need a face-to-face -face or, 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 or you know, follow-ups that are face-to-face. -face. We then decided that let's try to follow a blended approach and that way we can then monitor whether the learnings through the capacity building efforts are being implemented effectively mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because the effectiveness is quite key to measure the outcomes and the impact that we are having um, to the size through yes. our learnings and to make sure that the size can then produce products that will add value to the lives of the citizens. Excellent. Effectiveness is key. That is the parting shot that I'm picking up from your, your gold nugget of, 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 of wisdom and knowledge there as far as the blended learning and the blended approach to workshopping and um, AfroSci initiatives have to go. 
But this effectiveness, I want to talk about some areas, or rather an area where the question of effectiveness really has been raised. That is on SDGs. The PFM reporting framework, version 2.0, is being put out there as a tool that has several audit procedures that are going to assist auditors in auditing the issue of disaster and SDG implementation. How effective is that tool going to be in the hands of size? I mean, Macy, let's be honest. When MDGs came, it was very clear that the size did not take part a lot. If sure. they did, they did something which was not very visible. Yeah. And with SDGs, surely something has to change. But yeah. this too, what will it do? Yeah, um, Ed, thanks, thanks for, the, for that. And that's, that's, a, that's quite a, a, a key question. And again, um, I, I go back to AfroSci e evaluating the effectiveness of the tools that we have. So time and time again, we evaluate the effectiveness of the capacity building programs that we have um, and, and um, establish their, our relevance in the, in the region. So as we were doing this and also reflecting on IDI's work um, um, when, when they, they rolled out the evaluation or, or review of country readiness in terms of implementing yes. the SDGs, yes. we then realized that SAIS do not really take part in terms of um, reviewing the reports that mm -hmm. countries are required to table. Mm -hmm. um, and, and some countries do, some countries don't. Um, but participation by the size in terms of uh, reviewing and reporting on this progress of imp country implementation is not strictly followed. So we saw a gap and realized that we mm -hmm. can use this opportunity yes. um, in the upgrade of the PFM reporting tool mm -hmm. to include the uh, progress that has been made by countries in relation to the SDGs. Mm -hmm. um, the, the tool doesn't necessarily uh, audit the SDGs per se, mm -hmm. but it, it, it just reviews the progress that SI had, a country, sorry, a country has made in implementing the SDGs. Uh -huh. um, and, and we also realized that the country readiness in terms of um, disasters that strike mm -hmm. is quite important because uh, the, 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 the COVID-19 pandemic uh, showed us that the countries, most countries were not really ready mm -hmm. to deal with the disaster. Absolutely. So it is therefore important that SAIS would review their country's readiness to disasters and report on this uh, so countries can then act and implement necessary and key mm -hmm. um, aspects of being ready for a pandemic. A pandemic, a disaster is a disaster. You can never be ready for a, for a disaster. But okay. there are obviously some key things uh -huh. that countries need to respond to and make sure that um, when the disaster hits, then they, they, are, they are ready. We've seen in most instances where countries have um, shifted budgets mm -hmm. to take care of the, of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and um, some countries were, were quite fortunate in getting donor funding and, and loans to take care of the pandemic. Um, but in most instances, it showed that countries were not, were not, ready. not ready. So we believe that the PFM reporting framework, the reporting tool wow. is quite key wow. in, in those areas. Those areas. <coughs> Look, Macy, I mean, I've, I've heard you on various forums presenting on the PFM reporting framework especially version 2.0, and one of the, well, rather three key strengths that you always highlight or that you've highlighted in so many of the forums that you've discussed it is that, first of all, it's an annual assessment. Secondly, the size have a constitutional mandate to report on PFM witnesses to parliament. And thirdly, uh, the PFM tool is custom made uh, to the country needs and, and, and aspirations. Now, I mean, in all is greatness. The, the real question that comes to mind is those recommendations, are they being implemented? What's your plan? What's the conversation really? Ed, um, yes, the, the, the PFM reporting tool is quite key in terms of tracking mm -hmm. whether the country is responding 
to the recommendations that are coming out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as a result of um, audits, mm -hmm. as a result of implementing the necessary controls. Uh -huh. um, initially, when we developed the PFM reporting tool, um, it was to identify the weaknesses that might exist mm -hmm. within the, the country's PFM system. Yes. And identify the root causes relating to those gaps mm -hmm. so that a country can then respond mm -hmm. to those root causes accordingly. Mm -hmm. So um, if the side does not do this review on an annual basis, yes. we will never know whether a country has implemented those recommendations uh -huh. Uh -huh. and addressed the root causes that were identified initially. Wow. This is the reason why it is important mm -hmm. that, um, that, that the side reviews and reports mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. the PFM cycle. Um, now, the, the, the question is, is, is how, how does a SAI need to then review the, the PFM system of a country? Yes. Because a country has so many ministries and, and, and state-owned enterprises. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the advice that comes um, with the uh, 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 capacity building relating to the PFM reporting uh, framework. Mm -hmm. As you know, um, we have to train people in the size for sure. them to be able to apply this tool. Correct. So the, recommend, the recommendation is that um, the size staff need to identify the ministries that are key in mm -hmm. their country, mm -hmm. that have high value budget uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, to make sure that they have higher coverage yes. of what is going on in, at, at, at PFM level. Now, um, the question then is, if you select three ministries, mm -hmm. what about mm -hmm. the rest of the ministries? Yes. Um, from our perspective, mm -hmm. if there are gaps in the three key ministries, mm -hmm. you can be rest assured that they do exist at the Throughout. whole of government level. Yes. So those recommendations must then be can must then be shared with the uh -huh. other ministries for them to identify those root causes. That's the intention it. is um, to assist governments to um, strengthen their mm -hmm. preventative controls mm -hmm. and their detection controls mm -hmm. um, to make sure that theft is prevented, ideally, mm -hmm. and detected uh -huh. before it takes place. Because wow. once it takes place, as we've always heard, mm -hmm. it becomes very difficult to then recover the money. Wow. So the first price is to prevent it uh -huh. and then, uh, or then detect it very early before it, it materializes. So the PFM tool is ideally um, intended to uh -huh. identify those gaps that exist in the PFM system yes. and put recommendations so that the country can then respond to those recommendations. Wow, fantastic, fantastic. And I, I can see you're playing to the, to, to the technical game here. You're really uh, going the technical route, but I want to pull you out of that. Um, let's talk corruption. It's not a technical matter, but it's a real issue in Africa. And, and how can these two really um, assist? I, I know auditors, are, uh, I mean, we auditors, we, we, we're not very comfortable with the saying that, uh, look, we're here to stop corruption. But <laughs> it's something that is real. It's something that Supreme Audit institutions are facing. And you, as the leader of AfroCIE, uh, definitely are very much aware that this is a very contentious issue. Indeed, Ed, it is a contentious issue, and it is something that is a very worrying factor for our auditors general in, mm -hmm. in, in our region, yes. and I believe globally it is something that, 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 that is really concerning. Mm -hmm. um, and as you correctly mentioned, the auditors are not there to um, identify fraud and corruption, mm -hmm. but they are required to respond yes. to the triggers mm -hmm. or um, the risks that come with, you know, as they audit, they pick up risks, they pick up triggers of fraud and corruption, they need to respond to these accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and as I mentioned, the gaps within the PFM system mm -hmm. uh, are, are sort of the risks that exist or the gaps that exist yes. and, and would trigger uh, and open mm -hmm. an opportunity 
for fraud and corruption. So it is the auditor's responsibility to make sure that um, controls exist. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying the auditor's responsibility with caution. With caution. Because if, if, <laughs> if there isn't political will to implement effective controls, mm -hmm. The auditor is just there to audit, right? True. But True. the auditor has a responsibility to report wow. on these gaps that exist, mm -hmm. um, and 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 you know uh, uh, expose these these gaps that exist, so mm -hmm. that government can then respond wow. um, to, to to those. It depends on the powers that are given to the auditors, mm -hmm. as we, we we know they differ mm -hmm. um, in every country. But um, their responsibility is to make sure that these gaps are brought to the fore and governments then respond to these. Wow. You know what, Macy? I mean, I wasn't supposed to ask this question. I mean, my producer doesn't have it on my script for today, but the issue of independence is coming now. Uh, what's your comment on Sai independence and its ability to then carry out the, um, all these um, uh, really tough uh, assignments? And the issue of Sai independence comes up at our governing board. Mm -hmm. And um, as I was reflecting actually over the weekend Please on this you. topic of, of Sai independence, um, I, I, thought, I thought to myself, is this conversation of Sai independence mm -hmm. robbing our governing board to reflect on other important aspects mm. um, of, of capacity building? Um, should we create a separate forum of Sai independence. Mm -hmm. And what has been said over and over is that during these times, unfortunately, um, governments are, are, are compromising Sai independence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, in Afro Sai E, together with our partners, together with our donors, mm -hmm. um, Sai independence is a topic that is high on our agenda. Mm -hmm. And when the opportunity arises, um, where we feel that the Sai independence might be compromised, mm -hmm. then we agree as the governing board of Afro Sai E mm -hmm. on how we need to respond to um, these risks of compromising the Sai independence. Mm -hmm. I hope I've answered your question. Well, look, Mesa, without doubt, with, I mean, if, if the Sai doesn't have independence, we can give them some of the most sophisticated tools as the PFM uh, framework, and it is of no use really. Absolutely. Now, this too, and the discussion we've been having. Yeah. Look, you've been hitting all the right notes. PFM, you talk about it. Controls, you talk about it. SDGs, you're there. Site independence, you're there. Now, when we're looking at this too, what is its relationship with other broad PFM diagnostic tools, such as the PEFA, the Principles of Fiscal Transparency, and Open Budget Survey? Yeah. Where does it stand? You, you, know, you know, Edmond, you remind me, um, when we were developing this tool mm -hmm. together with GIZ, yes. there, there was criticism that the tool is duplicating what PEFA is doing. Wow. wow. Um, and Are you going to state where the criticism came from? Or? <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, we are not going to know who has criticized, but someone has criticized. But <laughs> my, my view, Edmond, is that if there is criticism, you mm -hmm. need to evaluate the value of the criticism yes. and yeah. respond to it appropriately. Mm -hmm. Some criticisms are not worth responding to, but mm -hmm. when you have them at the back of them, your mind, they wow. help you to make appropriate decisions Absolutely. And, and some you then you, you can respond to accordingly okay. but we have made sure that the PFM tool is intended for the size mm -hmm. um, for the size to track the progress that has been made in the areas that we have spoken about earlier I'm not going to repeat that okay. um, but, but, but we, we, we've, we've touched on many areas True. where the PM, PFM tool is is quite quite important. I agree. I agree. Um, and, and, and the emphasis is on size being able to go back year after year mm -hmm. and um, give an indication of where the country is in terms of implementing the action plan mm -hmm. um, that resulted from the different um, evaluations that were done by mm -hmm. different uh, uh, organizations, including this PFM, mm -hmm. and incorporating those findings that came from the different assessments, including the PFM, mm -hmm. um, and, and reporting, consolidating 
the, 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 the report being a consolidation of the country's response to oh, those assessments. Excellent. So, so th th that is our key because um, those assessments, they come, um, there is no follow through in terms of um, what progress has been made, mm -hmm. but with a size intervention, yes. then um, it is reported accordingly, yes. it is reported in parliament, wow. and um, all those that did the assessments are able to see the report mm -hmm. from the side. So that is the, the key. Fantastic. Fantastic. So in essence, we, uh, um, the PFM is not competition, it's mm -hmm. not a duplication, mm -hmm. but um, it, it, it complements well, all these assessments that have been done. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's friends. It's all Absolutely. about friendship. Absolutely. We seem to have the same agenda, but coming from different uh, angles. Yes. And interesting enough, we, mm -hmm. we actually have, have had um, the discussions with um, the, the, the evaluators of, PF, of PEFA, mm -hmm. and they, they, they were quite impressed with the work that we, wow. we've put in wow. um, on, on the PFM reporting wow. tool. And so far, it, it has really gained momentum mm -hmm. in a number of countries in the region and outside the region, um, seeing the tool as very valuable for the auditors. So, Fantastic. yeah, we, we really pride ourselves in these two. Excellent. I have to let you go, Macy, but before you go, I want you to give a promise, a promise to the region, a promise to Afro CIE, a promise to the people of Africa. So many times questions have been raised to say developmental institutions, capacity building agencies such as you and Afro CIE, you have a tendency of coming up with all these nice things that you put on the table, leave them with the institutions such as size and abandon them uh, and leave the size to figure out what to do. Um, how permanent is the PFM reporting framework at Afro on the Afro CIE agenda? What do you do? Ed, um, sustainability mm -hmm. is what drives mm -hmm. Afro CIE and what drives the, the region. Mm -hmm. um, you, and, and I've said this before mm -hmm. that um, outcomes impact yes. is quite key. Absolutely. So having spoken so much about what the PFM can deliver, mm -hmm. um, I believe that it is key and um, if governments respond accordingly to the implementation of the action plans, Firstly, they must develop those action, action plans <laughs> to address the gaps and the root causes that the auditors identify, right? Absolutely. And other assessments identify. Let me not leave the other assessments out. <clears throat> um, so if they do, um, we as the auditors, as the size, um, it, it, we, we, we promise that through audit, mm -hmm. uh, we will make sure that the benefits that must go to the citizens mm -hmm. go to the citizens. Perfect. But that is if the governments respond accordingly to what we have raised in the audit. Wow. So we believe that if the citizens can benefit, yes. that is the sustainability that we want. So the, the PFM tool is definitely sustainable in that mm -hmm. if governments respond, Yes. then um, the, 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 the citizens, that, as I have said, will benefit from that. And we keep on evaluating the interventions that we have um, in, in the region. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've said in the beginning that relevance is quite key for us. So we need to be relevant to the SAI mm -hmm. in terms of the SAI needs. So what we start with is um, what are the SAI trends? What are the areas where they need to develop? Mm -hmm. What capacity do they have to yes. be in a position to absorb the learnings that we have, the opportunities, the learning opportunities mm -hmm. that we have for mm -hmm. them? Mm -hmm. And for that reason, we believe that the interventions that we give to the size will be sustainable because we give them what they are able to absorb and what they are able to implement wow. so that they can grow um, at the right pace Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm choosing with the word right pace carefully. <laughs> I can see. <laughs> you, had a, you had six words and I can see you almost picking the right one. Okay, let's hear this one, right pace. 
<laughs> Let's run with that. <laughs> well, 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 Edmund, the right pace um, is the pace that the side can absorb and implement. Uh -huh. Is the pace that the side can be able to comply with the ESI standards. Mm -hmm. Is the pace for the side to be able to meet the expectations of yes. the stakeholders. Beautiful. So, um, and, 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 and it's also the pace that we as the region, mm -hmm. and I'm saying we as the region, and I'm, I'm not talking about the Afrosai E secretariat, because yes. you know my view about that. I as know the your view about as that. The secretariat, <laughs> as the secretariat, we are not big enough mm -hmm. um, to, to, to support the capacity needs of the region. That's so correct. we need every side in the Afrosai E region. Wow. So on. as we grow capacity in the afro e region, mm -hmm. we will be able to support one another. And when we say we leave no one behind, then we mean what we say, because we, we, we come together as the region to support each one within our region. And outside, wow. of course, I've mentioned that <laughs> um, the PFM reporting framework is used inside the region and outside. Absolutely, it is, and that's a yes. fact. Look, Macy, thank you so much. Um, every part where you were expected and are supposed to take responsibility, you have taken responsibility. Well, your first responsibility was to accept this invite to the interview. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, but before you go, um, for the time that you have spent, the PFM on the couch is a really hot seat. This is public record on what the CEO of AfroCIE has to say about this too. And for that, we thank her for the time. We'd like you to carry home with you. Thank you, Edmond. You're not bribing me, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> that word does not exist in my parents. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Ed Edmond, for this opportunity. It was a great pleasure. And um, yeah, for me to share my views about the PFM2 and the important work that AfroSci -E is doing. Absolutely. And you also do know that um, I appreciate the support that I get from the team. Fantastic. Um, and also from the region. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, amazing cow for you. <laughs> Excellent. Wow. That was, um, what can I say, a, a very exciting interview for me to, 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 to have done uh, here on the couch. Uh, with Mason Kao, the Chief Executive Officer of AfroCIE. Now, what is it about the PFM couch that is um, unique, I suppose? The PFM couch at AfroCIE series aims to build supreme audit institutions capacity building through the online learning platform. On this series, we have invited you to share your comments and views on all emerging and key public financial management matters that improve the quality and impact of Supreme Audit institutions and the audits that they're doing. Now, I have received several comments from quite a number of you on LinkedIn, Twitter, and so forth. And the team, the crew behind the scenes, they've managed to follow up on two comments which they thought I should bring to them discussion today. One comment is coming from Pauline Nyaga from Sai Kenya, and another comment is from James Peely from Sai Tanzania. But first of all, let's hear from Pauline Nyaga from Sai Kenya on her question on SDGs. Go for it, Pauline. Hello, Edmonds. My name is Pauline Nyaga, a performance auditor from Sai Kenya. I really enjoyed the PFM on the court show. I find it to be very innovative and informative. I am sure that SAI auditors will find it resourceful in understanding how the PFM RF tool can be used to improve the quality of audit reports. I have a question for you. How does the PFM RF tool audit SDGs and which SDGs does it audit? Thank you and looking forward to learning more from the PFM on the Code Show. Thank you so much, Pauline, for the question that you raised on um, SDGs and how this tool um, goes for it. I must say, Macy did go for it um, earlier in the discussion that we had, but I'll just consolidate on the knowledge that she left us with. The tool in itself approaches SDGs in two ways. 
First of all, it prompts the auditor at the planning stage to ensure that when they are coming up and identifying the entities to be audited, the auditor needs to put to consideration which ministries, departments, or agencies have the highest impact on the attainment of SDGs. And from that analysis, the auditor then chooses to focus and perform their audit on those particular ministries. And secondly, the tool itself has a number of embedded audit procedures which the auditor is going to use and perform to check the implementation of SDGs within those ministries. Now, at consolidated, or rather at consolidation, we can then see the effectiveness and efficiency within which the public financial management system is prepared to address the issue of SDGs. Thank you for that question, Polly. The second question is from James Peely from Sai Tanzania. James Peely, please, take it away. Hi, Eddie. I'm James Peely, an Assistant Director General responsible for performance audits here at the Sai of Tanzania. I find PFM on the Coach Show to be very innovative and informative to Sai auditors. Congratulations for this good work. But I have a question for you on using the PFM RF tool. What format of reports should we expect from size using this tool? Thank you. Thanks, James, for that question. Very important question because the report is honestly the only product which the world outside of the size is going to see. And thus it becomes very important. It represents all the hard work that the auditors have put in. It represents the rigor and the diligence that would have been applied. James, as far as reporting is concerned, the PFM tool subordinates to the reporting regime per country. Now, Supreme Audit Institutions, they take their marching orders as far as reporting is concerned from their Public Audit Act. Some Supreme Audit Institutions have to submit a report once a year, and some can submit any time. You know, it varies from one side to another. But the way the tool is designed, is designed to accommodate the various reporting regimes that are available to size. So yes, you can have the PFM results being incorporated into the main audit, main audit report, which is produced once a year. And you can also have it as a standalone, a report which clearly focuses on PFM matters only and is tabled to parliament. What matters most is to make sure that those findings really do find themselves into the report and they are reported to a parliament which then debates and the process moves from there. Thank you, James, for that question. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tagging along and staying with us for the last hour or so. For more information on the agility of the PFM tool and in auditing SDGs and disaster preparedness, please click on the video below and do not shy away from using this technology as a way of improving your audits. But of course, I will not go without saying this. Your views and opinions on how we improve this series is always valuable. A big thank you to James Peely, Pauline, who featured on the show today. I also salute all of you who managed to send your views and comments to the previous episode. Continue to visit our website and give us your feedback, including all your PFM emerging topics and questions which you believe are critical to empowering Supreme Audit Institutions for greater impact and quality. Until we meet again in this life or the next, I am Edmund Shoko and this is the PFM Couch at AfroSAE.